All right, so let's talk you through the steps of making a box. There's a really awesome website called makercase.com that'll give you a whole bunch of options for making your own box. Some of the ones you can do, regular boxes, polyhedral boxes, you can do even boxes with, di with dividers. We're just gonna focus on doing a simple box for this, but you can play with any of these if you want to. The kind of box I recommend you make uh, is going to have some of the following settings. When you go to make your dimensions, you just need to be mindful of whether you're thinking about the inside dimensions of the box or the outside dimensions of the box. The only difference is how the thickness of the wood is accounted for. All right, so if you know the exact dimensions of something you're making, um, you should consider using the inside dimensions for your box. Um, if you don't care or if you know that the box needs to fit in a certain spot, you should use the outside dimensions. If you don't care, um, then either one is fine. But if you are trying to fit a certain thing, um, be mindful to use the inside dimensions. All right, uh, I'm gonna take the lid off this box. I can better kind of see where the top is. So I'm gonna make this an open box. And I can see right away as I click and drag, you can see where the inside of the box is. There's the bottom. Um, so if I change the width, height, and depth, that's gonna kind of show up different. So suppose I wanna make something that is a wide, shallow box, maybe a tray for coasters or something. So I'm gonna make it a little bit wider, uh, a little bit deeper. All right, I can see I still have a square right there, but if I make it shorter, if I get the height maybe just an inch, um, you can see it's now a wide, shallow box. So if you're not sure which way is up or where the top is or what width, height, and depth are, take the, um, make it an open box, and that'll give you a better visualization of what it is. All right, so I'm going to keep going. Um, I'm actually going to make this a uh, kind of wider box. Um, there's something I can throw, like, loose change um, into. So I'm going to leave it at 6 inches. I'm going to make it about three inches tall. I'm going to make it about three inches wide. That's good. Maybe I'll make it a little shorter. Um, I like that. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change the kind of joints that we have from flat. That one, you kind of just got to line them up and glue. The finger joints are awesome because they interlock like puzzle pieces and you get a really sturdy box. You put some glue on all the inside faces and that is going to be a really solid box. If you uh, close the box, it'll add another part on top. If you leave it open, it'll have a flat part on top like that. All right. The only other thing you need to change is you need to make sure that the thickness of your material matches what you're going to use. All right. As I'm recording this now, if you're going to use what we use for our regular laser wood, um, you need to set a custom thickness, and your material thickness is going to be 0.18 inches. All right. Not one eighth, but 0.18. So you hit OK. You might notice your um, the finger joints change thickness a little bit, um, but that's just to account for the actual thickness of the wood. If you don't like how this looks and you think it's too many, too few finger joints, you can play with the size of each one and adjust it around. Usually default is fine, but if you have some specifics that you want to account for, um, you can mess with that here. All right. Once you have it set, make sure everything looks good and you're going to download box plans. All the defaults should be good. We're going to download as an SVG and that'll go right into your downloads folder. Next step is to go into Illustrator. All right, we're gonna make a new file with our defaults. If you need to revisit that, it's in the other laser videos. Um, but we're gonna file place, where is it? There it is. We're gonna file place the um, box plans that we just generated. It's an SVG, so you could click the place button, click once anywhere on um, your open artboard once it loads up. And you see you have your box right there with red and gray lines. You need to do one more thing before you can send this off to the laser cutter. All right, right now, if you look at what this is, this is one grouped object, which is cool, but we need to get rid of the text and we need to set the right stroke width for our box edges. So I'm going to go ahead and ungroup this until it, everything is separate. Uh, if I click out of it and click onto one thing, now everything is separate. So ungroup it as many times as you need to until um, ungroup is no longer an option. Right. Next thing you're going to do is I'm going to click on uh, the text and delete it. All right, all that thick gray stuff is where the text is. That just helps you keep track of which side is which. Um, if you need that, um, you can figure out a way to engrave it instead of cut it through. You probably won't need it, though. You'll just be able to figure out which piece goes where, especially if you do the finger joints. Last thing we need to do, set the stroke width. So select everything, go into your properties, set the stroke width to our usual 0.001. And then if you want, you can change the stroke color to black. Shouldn't matter, but uh, you're welcome to do that as well. Line it up in a great place. And at this point, you can send it over to the laser cutter. Once it's cut out, uh, put the pieces together, assemble them with a little bit of wood glue, throw a rubber band on it to let it set up, and you are good to go. There's your box.